Baalbek researchers in Lebanon are attempting to solve a mystery involving three stones. Stones weighing as much as the largest Baalbek would have been lifted by 18 heavy-duty cranes today. Even the components of nearly 100 columns would require incredible convoys of specially secured heavy-duty vehicles. On top of that, pillars of the temple are made of a stone that only occurs in Aswan, Egypt, nearly 1,500 kilometers away. The transport of heavy stones already poses problems. All of this led to a discussion as to whether the Temple of Baalbek was built by the same advanced technological civilization that produced the stones of Baalbek. The limestone cornerstones discovered below the Temple of Jupiter, the limestone trilithon stones, which may have belonged to a previous Temple of Baalbek, and the limestone's retaining wall monoliths encircling the temple are all considered to be part of the Baalbek stones. The retaining wall stones weigh about 300 tons each, while the cornerstones each weigh 100 tons. The the location of the stone quarries have been determined by archaeologists and experts, but how the stones were brought into position remains a mystery. Because of their sheer magnitude and the fact that the foundations of the earlier Temple of Baalbek don't appear to have been altered during the Roman invasion, some archaeologists doubt that the stones were transported and set by the Romans. In order to further the enigma, the few surviving Roman texts on Baalbek or Heliopolis makes no mention of the stones at all. It is so difficult to say that they were present during the arrival of the Romans. Additionally, there is what looks to be a Roman drumstone, column-shaped stone, underneath the so-called Trilithon stones, which would indicate that the Trilithon stones were erected after the Romans arrived. Others, however, contend the drumstone was a later restoration of the building. The only thing that is clear is that no one knows which culture first constructed the city of Baalbek. The Phoenicians were the first known city-building civilization to inhabit that area. Archaeological evidence from the area at and around the ancient city and ruins of Baalbek, Lebanon, dates as far back as 9000 BCE. Baalbek, the name of the city, is Arabic for Lord of Baal of the Beka Valley. The sky god of the Phoenician religion is called Baal. It is at least known that the location served as a place of worship for Baal and Astar, the Queen of Heaven. While the Romans were aware of that location by its Greek name, Heliopolis, they called it Baalbek after the Phoenician god Baal. The odd paucity of documentation on who might have ordered, paid for, or created the temple has been observed by the historian Del Upton. The location serves as a metaphor for Upton's theory on the function of creative distortion in architectural history. He claims that in the absence of specific facts, Baalbek has transformed into a very accommodating screen upon which to project strikingly varied stories. Numerous local myths surround the temple's genesis. It was constructed by giants under Nimrod's direction, giving rise to the name of the Tower of Babel. It was constructed by Solomon with the help of jinns as a palace for the Queen of Sheba. It is claimed that the jinns went on strike, which is why some blocks were left in the quarry. Roman temple runes can be found there among some of the most opulent buildings, including one honoring Jupiter and another honoring Bacchus, the god of wine and pleasure. At first glance, these temple runes resemble many of the other Roman structures with their foundations of stone columns, stone pieces scattered about, and remnants of god statues. However, there is a mystery that has not yet been resolved regarding the Baalbek Temple Complex. The triathlon, three stone blocks that are 19 meters long and 6 meters broad and weigh 800 tons apiece, is part of the Temple of Jupiter's foundation. They are fabricated so smoothly that no sheet of paper would fit between their joints. The Forgotten Stone, the Stone of the South, and the Pregnant Woman Stone are three other stone giants that were discovered by researchers in the Baalbek Quarry, though they never left the quarry. These are thought to be the largest stone monuments ever made and moved by humans, and how they were made and moved is still a mystery to this day. Today we examine a different mystery involving Baalbek, stone columns. There were 100 of these columns from Aswan to Baalbek, and today the six Corinthian columns that are still standing are the city's landmark. Originally, they were part of the Temple of Jupiter, which was surrounded by a total of 54 columns of this type. These columns are unique because they are the largest structures ever built in antiquity. Each one is 22.6 meters high and 2.2 meters in diameter. The amazing thing about this monument is the origin of the stone. Today, we can say with certainty that the rose granite comes from a quarry near Aswan, and that this is, as you probably immediately recognize correctly in Egypt to clarify here, the scales of Egypt. According to Google Maps, which today uses routes that are paved and accessible by cars, Baalbek is currently 1,444 kilometers away from Aswan. Although there were undoubtedly many animals of burden and something resembling road carts in the Roman Empire when the Temple of Jupiter was constructed in Baalbek in the 2nd or 3rd century AD, the movement of a large amount of stone seems miraculous. Additional components for about 50 columns of the Temple of Bacchus, as well as the actual material for the 54 columns of the Temple of Jupiter, were delivered from Aswan to Baalbek. The total weight of the stones was several thousand tons. 
You can now visualize the forces requiring to move masses of stone weighing several thousand tons across the distance of 1,440 kilometers. If you have ever seen a Roman road, you know that it was made of plain cobblestones with divots, grooves, and gaps between the stones. How could the Romans have constructed such a road? There is proof that they had complex lifting and pulling devices and that their operational method has been preserved. Two beams are needed for the job and the thickness of each one depends on the maximum load anticipated. They are connected at the top with an iron stirrup and divided at the bottom into an inverted V. Ropes are attached to the head of the boom and are arranged all around it to keep it stable. This relief from Via Cassia in Italy depicts the exact method being employed by two workers. It may be used to demonstrate how the stones were loaded onto carts as well as how the parts were stacked on top of one another to make columns and ball back. However, critical minds find it almost impossible to believe that the Roman stones of other qualities would have been available from quarries much closer, making it a mystery why rose granite had to be used at this location. Nevertheless, the stone columns of the temples of Jupiter and Bacchus do not necessarily contradict the human possibilities of the Romans to the extent that we have to consider the work of extraterrestrials, which can be ruled out with certainty. There is evidence that the Romans struggled to move the obelisk of Karnak it wasn't until Constantine the Great had it reduced in size that it could be moved towards Constantinople. The obelisk weighs a maximum of 500 tons and took many years to travel. The triathlon and the Temple of Jupiter's foundation, on the other hand, weigh at least 800 tons and have thus far exceeded the heavy load capacity. Researchers continue to speculate about why the three enormous stones were left in the Baalbek quarry. There are three possible explanations for this mystery. Number one. The stones might have turned out to be too heavy to transport and thus remained laying down. Number two, the stones were parts of a much larger monument constructed before the time of the Romans, but this one could not be completed. Number three, the stones were rejects, broken or improperly cut out of the stone. If the stones had truly been too heavy to transport, their creators would have reduced their size and used them elsewhere. One such block was removed from the quarry. Although there is currently no concrete proof that the foundation under the Temple of Jupiter is much older than it was in the Roman period, it is frequently hypothesized that this is the case not only for the foundation, but also for the surrounding structures. This explanation also supports the argument that the stones could have been rejected since many of the smaller stone blocks were used in the foundations of Malbec and the temples. The phenomenon is also present in Egyptian pyramids and the supposedly forgotten Pyramid of Baca. And oddly enough, in each instance, the uniquely Aswan rose granite was also utilized. What these structures also share is that it is difficult to determine their true age and intended use. Is it possible that Baalbek pyramids and the temple foundations are at least 10,000 years old and were constructed by an unidentified culture? Of course, people interested in strange phenomena have frequently speculated that Baalbek may have served as a sort of spaceship landing plateau. However, given the statistics and the size of the platform, as well as what is currently known about spaceship landing sites, this is quite improbable. Recent evidence suggests that the human race may have produced advanced civilizations long before antiquity and Egyptian antiquity. Set these theories aside and examine more natural explanations for where this stone giantism comes from and how to explain why people in ancient times were able to transport stones over great distances, where we would struggle today with all our technology. There are several approaches to this problem. It is amazing to see how similar buildings are in this world created by cultures that supposedly had no contact with one another. At the temple entrance of Baalbek, a trapezoidal shape can be found, which is not necessarily indicative of the temple construction of the Romans, but the shape was found in buildings and Egypt contacts. Is it possible that one such civilization was responsible for construction of the triathlon at Baalbek? We must also be aware that archaeology has only been around for about 200 years. In this time, a lot has been excavated and we have learned a lot about the prior cultures, but we can by no means know everything and have not found everything that lies dormant. So we must be aware that there is a connection between the buildings that the old established archaeology and natural sciences do not want us to see. You tell us what your explanation is for the unusual stone transports in ancient times and for massive stone monuments. Do you believe in the work of a god? Who could have been at work in Baalbek? We only know that the Romans very likely did not build the foundation under the temples, indicating that it must have been an older culture and that they had a better technique than we even have today. What do you think? Tell us in the comment section below.